So yeah, my name's Luke Clayton, um, and I run a company called Clayton Creative, and that's been sort of running for the last 12 months, I think it is now. Um, and about six months into um, working with Clayton, uh, Blue Sky came to us and said, oh, we'd like to ha you know, have a look at you creating a um, pensions calculator. So we do predominantly any kind of design and advertising for pretty much anyone, but we specialise in the pensions communications industry, so it, it fitted perfectly with us. So I spoke to Jess and Paul about what they wanted, um, and we kind of put together a plan for how that would work. Um, so a lot of my presentation will be about the tools that we use to create that calculator, but broadly those um, communication tools and technology and sort of designs could be applied to any form of design or any kind of form of member engagement. So um, throughout the presentation, if you've got any questions, just yell them out. It's sort of like it to be like a two-way conversation. Uh, that Dean will probably be there, but at some point, <laughs> that's a cue by the way for you just to go for it. Um, so yeah, um, the the key point I think to take from my presentation, if there's only one thing to take, um, but it's quite apt because it fits in with the kind of communication that I think is effective when you're dealing with pension comps, and that is to lead with one message. So if there's only one message you want to communicate in pensions. Um, go with that and then have a load of supporting information that kind of backs that up. Because if you try and lead with just a whole wealth of information, which is so tempting to do in the pension industry because there's so much we need to communicate, you just lose them. So lead with one form of communication and then that will act as a hook and then it'll get people involved and they'll start to research and it'll just plant a little seed. It might not even work that day, you know, if you're dealing with like a 20 something who's just started in the pension industry, uh, started in their, their pension. Um, then they might be disengaged forever, you know, you, you might never get them. But if you plant that seed, you stand a good chance. Um, okay, so when we talk about engaging them, who is there? You know, we talk about empowering them. Well, in advertising and design, that's quite easy. You can kind of segment your target audience. You can say, oh, okay, we're well, after this demographic or that demographic. But as we found with the pensions calculator, we're not dealing with a specific segment. You know, we're dealing with everybody, right? So anyone can have a pension with Blue Sky. So who, who do we target? What do we do? Do we segment this off and say, right, we're only going to communicate to the biggest segment, or we're just going to communicate with the segment that needs to know the most information? Because we've only got one tool to deliver to these people. So how do we do that? And I suppose, ultimately, we came up with a way of delivering one tool but different user journeys. So we presented one tool that all the different members can use, but they experience that in a different way. Um, so you've kind of got lots of forms of communication in one tool, and we think that that's a really effective way of doing it. And it allows people who are super experienced to kind of want to know all the detail, but then it also um, informs people who just want like a really, really simple overview, just to quickly get in there and say, okay, your pension's good, your pension's bad, or looking good, or looking bad. Um, as simple as that. So it's about that simple message, but it gets that hook in there. So if they see that they need to make an adjustment, okay, start thinking, right, how do I do that? Um, and then start maybe to learn about ABCs, all that kind of stuff. That's all good, right? Um, then let's look at what do they expect? So there's a certain expectation with users these days. So, you know, <laughs> I, was, I was saying to Mike, I won't actually mention the, um, the general election, but I'm going to. Um, <laughs> So you notice that um, social media kind of changed the, the, the election completely. And we kind of think that that was a younger demographic that used social media to, to kind of change the result a little bit. You know, and it's kind of, we're almost making our own news these days. But if you look at Facebook or any kind of platform like that, it's kind of, everyone's using it. You know, there's an expectation from all segments to, to have digital tools, to have it designed really, really well, to have it super intuitive, and to make sure that it's engaging and all that kind of stuff. And if we're working in the pension industry, we're giving people communication which is kind of behind the curve and doesn't really have that, and has this wealth of information that's really difficult to access, are people going to engage with it? It's already quite dry and quite difficult to get behind it. So let's go the other way, you know, let's make it super simple, super intuitive, and make it so that we can engage with people and it's designed really nicely. And, you know, we can, we can learn something from Facebook, we can look at Amazon, we can look at online banking and see how they're doing that, how they're communicating their messaging. Um, and that kind of leads on to things like um, UI and UX, so um, user interface and user experience. That I could probably talk to you guys for another like three hours, but 
these dulcet tones for three hours and sure you're not going to want that. So um, to summarise, um, with UI and UX, you kind of just want to keep it super, super simple. So if your user interface is quite derivative, that's fine. You know, if someone comes to it and says, this isn't original, um, I've seen this before, that's great because that means they know how to use it. So um, when it comes to UI and UX, make sure that it's just really, really simple to use. And you can do all the fancy stuff with your design and all that kind of stuff, so it doesn't necessarily need to be on the UI. Um, mobile first. So this is a little bit of a buzzword in the industry I work in, in advertising and design, because people always talk about it, that it's, it's super, super important, because people are using mobile devices more than they are desktop devices. But do we, do we actually do that in our industry? Do we actually um, live up to that reputation of designing things mobile first? Well, when we did the Blue Sky calculation, in fact it's still in development now, we, we only have a mobile version at the moment because we are sticking to mobile first. Because we know that if we can get the experience working really, really well on a mobile device, then when we change that to desktop and tablet and all that kind of stuff, it's only going to be better. So make sure that your engagement levels are high on mobile and then the rest of it will kind of be a cakewalk. Um, Personalisation. So this is a really, really good one. Um, and I know, Kim, you mentioned it actually, which is really good because I thought, oh, brilliant, that fits in perfectly. I've got someone backing me up, someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, and yeah, so in terms of personalisation, it, it really doesn't need to be particularly complicated. With the calculator we've got, it's linked to user's data, so straight away when you log in, it says, hi Luke, blah, blah. <coughs> Um, and just that level, it just makes you think, oh, okay, this tool isn't generic, this communication isn't generic, it's about me specifically. Um, and already you're kind of more on board because someone said your name, you know, and that is as simple as that. Um, and then if you've got more information, it's more tailored for them, then that's even better. Um, and you can, you know, personalization, we see that every day in Facebook, and you know, when you log on to Amazon, it makes recommendations. So we all kind of expect it as well. Gamification. Now this is one that I mention to a lot of my clients and they usually take like a step back and just think, well, you could put like Mario in my communication, which I would love to do, by the way, but I don't think it's necessarily what you need to do. So, so when we talk about gamification, we're really talking about um, using elements from the gaming industry, bringing that across to communications in this, in this case. And that can be super, super simple as well. So um, we're talking about on the blue star calculator where your pension fund animates up so it starts at a zero value and then when it calculates your pension it kind of animates up like a score in a game. Also kind of visual clues, so if you do something which is deemed as positive in the calculator you get a positive reinforcement in terms of an image, so it's kind of like you win in a game I guess. So little subtleties like that that you can bring from the gaming industry just to make it that much more engaging. Do you intend to use virtual reality to show the difference between a good outcome and a poor outcome? <laughs> I've been crowned, wow, well, you know? So, um, the place I used to work out, I did just that. So, like the Aviva. Uh, yeah, yeah, so Aviva do some really cool stuff, yeah, they do some great stuff. Um, I've developed a, um, a VR platform, actually, which does just that. So, it was a, when it was the Pensions Freedoms, um, you know, you kind of had like three choices, and it was about getting people involved with the fear of making the wrong decision. So, you know, we're all kind of got this more responsibility that you say. So I know that, um, Maggie, it was in your presentation, we had that swatch thing, we are saying about, you know, the landscape's changing and it's like, the onus is on the member and the employee to kind of become more engaged. So when the Pensions Freedom Act came in, um, we, did, we developed a VR modeler, which basically showed you um, like a fear of falling, I guess. So you put the VR headset on and it tracked your body and also you could move around this environment. And if you stepped off one side or the other, you fell. Um, and <laughs> in terms of engagement, it's like the best thing I've ever done because, um, you know, there was, there was a team of like rugby players who came over and they were all like cheering each other and said, oh, let's have a go at this or whatever. So um, I put it on one guy um, and he started walking across this VR plank, obviously he was just on the exhibition stand. Um, and he took about two steps and then he just stopped and he said, no, I, can't, I just can't do it. And everyone was laughing and taking the mic out of him. And he took the VR headset off and there was a little tear rolling down his cheek. <laughs> I mean, he was with laughter, but, you know, in terms of the power of engagement, VR is just incredible, you know, because you're putting them in that environment. So, yeah, if we could have tools more like that in the industry, I think that would be great. Um, but that, yeah, I mean, with digital stuff, that's what you can do. And hopefully that's the way forward. Um, all of this is great, 
you know, we talk about um, technology, we talk about design techniques, how we engage with people in that way. But how do we know that that works, right? So I know both of you were talking about um, metrics and analytics. So in the digital world, you can actually measure the engagement. So you can see exactly how much engagement there is and where it's kind of failing. Um, and with the pension calculator, we're sort of wanting to do that as well. So if, say, like a specific page isn't working or people are dropping off on a, on a, on a, on a button that's not, not necessarily engaging with them, you can analyse that and actually record it and feed it back in. So if your platform that you've developed is open enough, you can then take that feedback and change it on the fly to make sure that your communication is the best that it can be at any one specific instance. And that's really what the measurable results are about. You can use them where you just measure um, some communications that you've sent out there and say, oh, okay, it's been effective or it's not been effective, we'll do better next time. But if you can build it in so you can actively change the tool or the communication to fit in, to make it more engaging, that's really, really powerful. So, um, with all this stuff, I'm blissfully aware I've not given you any examples of any of this stuff. So I'm going to give you two examples of, of where we've kind of used these techniques to make sure that engagement is high. And one of them will be a quick demo of the um, Blue Sky Pensions Calculator, which is still in development, so the figures won't work. But the other one is um, when I said, okay, 10, six, I think it was about six months into um, trading, we got approached by Virgin Media to do a big London advertising campaign. And it was for the Virgin Boom winners. So it's this company called McReba and they put plastic into roads. It's just a really innovative product um, that makes the roads really stronger and it's, it's brilliant. But there were three clients essentially. So there were Cedars who were doing the crowdfunding for McReba because the end goal of this big London campaign was to make £600,000 through crowdfunding. There was... Um, Virgin Media, and then obviously there's McReber as well, who do the plastic roads, and they all wanted their communications. We had 86 sites across London, the digital billboards, the big screen across Waterloo. It was crazy. Um, and we sat down and we thought, okay, what? we've got all these messages that, that they want to incorporate. What is the core message? And this kind of comes back to my original point. You need to keep that message super, super simple. So work out what your end goal is and stick with that. If you need further information, for people to look at, then give them a hook to kind of get them engaged and then give them that further information. And we could actually measure it with the McGreeva campaign. We actually measured it across the website and obviously we could measure it in terms of how much money we were getting through crowdfunding. So I'll just give you a quick demo. This is, like, this is brilliant because I'm doing a demo about technology so I know things aren't going to go well. Um, okay, so if we go on to... So this is a really, really short video of just kind of the things that we delivered on, on this campaign. So yeah, that was the McReaver. So this all came oh, about because stop it, stop it, stop I, it. 
<laughs> so that was the McGreevy campaign that we worked on, and, and like I say, we had great measurable results on that, and we could actually see how much funding we were generating, and they needed to get, was it uh, £600,000 in 60 days? And with that campaign, we led with that super simple message, we had social media all linked up to it, and they actually got, um, they doubled their funding, so they got 1.2 million in 14 days, and then they shut off the things that they had to basically give away market share, so they wanted it to be that. So it was a really successful campaign. So it's, it's, we know that it works, you know, keep the communication simple. Have we got time to demo the calculator? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just wanted to check that. Um, okay. And I think sometimes in the financial services industry, and particularly pensions, we say, that's a cheap fun for us. You know, it needs to be sensible. It needs yeah. to be informative. Yeah. And we've got to change that way of thinking because it's not working. We're not getting the message across. So if we can, if we can look at other industries. And in actual fact, when I was looking at revamping our homepage for um, our new Crystal website, I actually went and looked at people that design websites, websites, not other financial services, because I was, I thought, oh, I'll look at competitors, let's have a look at what they're doing. It, it's appalling. You know. <laughs> we did, we did. Sure they've got a But uh, it, it's too complex, too much yeah. tech, so we ended up looking at other people in other sectors that have had success with engagement, we, rather than we being some narrow-minded We did research on, on uh, the pension, web in the pensions industry, and to be honest, particularly in the traditional sector, it's appalling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of promise, very little to so I think that comes back to your point before about st stopping being sort of very cl closer with just pensions and, and what we can see and looking broader than that. Yeah. <coughs> so um, this is kind of a very early development of the, um, the calculator that we've put together. So we talk about personalisation, so straight away you log in um, and you've got Hi Andrew. And this, will, this tool is essentially to, to show you how your fund is performing. So... This is going to be great, judging the metrics on this, how many people read the terms and conditions. Uh, I don't think I've done it once, so. Um, it's going to be on a simple scroll. So it's in this view because, as I say, we've developed it purely on mobile so far, so the experience is going to be that much better on, on desktop. So once you've logged in, you get all your kind of usual statistics. These are kind of all numbers that are a little bit random at the moment because it's not linked up to live data. But this is where you start to get the different user journeys. So <coughs> if someone's super experienced, they're going to be looking at all of these figures, checking that they're right, um, checking that maybe they thinking that they maybe want to change these on the later screen. But if you don't know what they are, they've all got these information buttons. And if you click on one of these information buttons, you get, hopefully, like a little animation which explains what it is. And this is just like an early quick snapshot of what it would be and that have like a voice over just to just to play over. So it's kind of working on that idea that we used to kind of, or I certainly used to Google something and watch like a read a web page on how, how to do something or if I wanted a bit of information. But increasingly I just go to YouTube and I watch how to do it and you can take in that information way, way quicker. So that's a great thing to have on this tool, just a little bit of a animation cue on, on information. Then we come down to a little bit more of a personalisation side of things. So we're asking the member what they're wanting to do with their retirement. So it's not about saying, okay, <coughs> you, want, you want this in retirement because it will enable you to do, to do X. We're actually saying, okay, what are you wanting to do with your retirement? And then we'll paint that picture around your fund. So you can choose any one of these. Um, being a family man, I'm going to go with being with the family. Uh, That's because there's no beer on there. Yeah, I know, you know, I was really wanting to put a gin and tonic here, but <laughs> I just kind of thought, no, I won't, I won't, I'll leave it out. <laughs> um, and then this is quite comfy, it's you though, shall I? So then we come down to the projection. So we can immediately see, ignore these figures, because like I say, they're kind of placeholders, but um, we can immediately see that my projection is looking pretty grim. So it's this grim cloud effect. If I moved my ABCs up, because I'm thinking, well, that looks a bit rubbish. Then all of a sudden, the background animates, and it starts looking a little bit nicer. Don't know if anyone's going to make 9% ABCs, but it's starting to look like it's a, a good, positive retirement. 
but it comes all the way to 15%. Um, and then you've got your perfect sort of retirement picture, so you've been with the family, um, and it's kind of looking really, really good. So from a member's perspective, so they the option of not being with the family. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. That could, be on the, that could be on the comparison view. <laughs> I was thinking my, my family layouts don't look like this. <laughs> But by then it's grandchildren, isn't it? So you can give them back, that's better. <laughs> um, but I think this comes back to a really important um, message that we were talking about before about the fact that auto-enrolled members see a fund value and a, a suggested, con a suggested contribution, a minimum contribution rate and assume that's enough. And that actually, you know, if you haven't got huge wealth, even 10, 20,000 pounds in a pension pot feels nice. That's a lump of money. That's a good lump of money. And this is about putting things into perspective, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, even, I mean, I work in this industry, but I don't necessarily know, like, what um, my estimated retirement fund, is that good? Is that bad? Um, and if you're relying on people to analyse those figures, you've probably got to lose them. Whereas, ultimately, if you get this background in there, <coughs> it's obviously a super simplified view of it. But it's enough to get people thinking about it and seeing, oh, okay, so I changed the ABCs, what does my outcome look like now? So it's getting to be more realistic then. Absolutely, yeah, that's it, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the top of tail of my presentation. Um, ultimately, the message is, yeah, go with simple communication because if you lead with trying to communicate everything, then you end up communicating nothing. Um, so, yeah, great stuff. Thanks for your time. Thank you.